Cool. Hi, can you guys hear me? I hope so. My name is Eric Eichmann. I'm Chief Revenue Officer at Critio. Um, and a lot of people ask us, what does Critio mean? I should be behind. Here. Critio means I predict in ancient Greek. And so why, why Critio as a name? Well, what we do is actually predict uh, shopping behavior from consumers to help e-commerce companies engage and convert uh, those consumers, those customers. So let me give you, uh, or sort of a more direct value proposition. We effectively bring search-like performance to display. So what, what does that mean? We, we actually bring similar ROIs that you do or you get uh, from doing uh, AdWords to display. And not only that, we actually adopt the same pricing model, which is a cost per click model. And as you, all you know, uh, the majority of display is done in a cost per impression model, a CPM model. So that's actually uh, a performance-based pricing model. And so uh, what kind of performance do we drive? Because uh, the scale is an important element. It's always easy to do good ROI on a small scale, but doing it on a large scale is actually quite difficult. So uh, 6.5 billion is what we drive for our customers. So when you look at post-click from uh, Credio banners, how many sales do we drive for our customers? That's about 6.5 billion. So that's at scale. So let's take an example of uh, what this means. Uh, this is an example of a US retailer. We approached a US retailer. They were very skeptical. Why? Because there's a lot of people that say, oh, I got a great technology. I can bring performance to you. And they, have had, uh, they had had disappointing results. And they said, OK, Credio, we're happy to do something with you, but we expect at least 8 to 1 ROI. That means for every dollar in investment that they make with us, they expect $8 in sales, which was the high range of anything they had achieved before from others. And this is the, the results that we got from them, 28 to 1 after a month. And what drove those results? Two, two key things, and you, you're familiar with these metrics. Uh, we got a click-through of 0.45, which, as you know, is actually um, a 10x versus what you get normally in the industry. And the second thing that we got also is a very high conversion rate from uh, those customers, uh, about a 6% or above a 6%, which is, you only see in search. Uh, and so they were very happy with us. Uh, interesting, I, I always like the analogy that uh, our US colleagues use, which is a lot of people say that they can play basketball, but very few people play like LeBron James. So it all comes down to the goods and are you delivering the goods. And, and in this case, of course, and in all of our customers' cases, uh, we deliver high uh, performance. Another thing that's interesting is that uh, we've done a study with Nielsen, and we found out that actually 65% of the people that click on performance banners do not, do not click on search links. That is paid links. So you're missing, if you're, if, you're, if you're doing only search, you're missing a whole range of folks out there uh, that won't click on those links. So when you think about performance like search, think of display. It can happen. All right, so how, how do we do this? Uh, a couple of things that are very important is the data, the unique data that we leverage to, uh, to, to deliver this performance. One, we integrate very, uh, very deeply with our customers. We get uh, product page behavior. We also look at the checkout behavior of customers that come to this site. You look at what they buy, how big it is. All of this data, of course, is non personally identifiable data. But we also use what people do with our banners. So what's the context, what the, what's the placement, what's the format, and uh, you know, what they click on, do they end up buying uh, the, the, the product that we offer to them. And all of that com combined goes into a machine learning system that delivers and builds uh, sophisticated uh, statistical based models. And those statistical based models, which evolve over time and have become stronger and stronger over time with all the data that we have, end up being the machine, if you will, that drives the prediction 
uh, to figure out which banners to serve, to which people, with what products, etc. So in practice, how does this work? Because obviously that's complicated. So first thing is we get all this data. And this is an example from uh, Expedia. We get all this data. All algorithms figure out that we have to serve a banner. Now, what's important here is not that just that you're serving an Expedia banner to that particular user, but you're serving a banner with Cancun with a particular property. It's a very personalized banner personalized banner. In addition to that, you're also serving a particular creative format that works for that client. And then hopefully that results in a click. Interestingly enough, we also have a dynamic linking to the product page of that particular product at the client site so that you're only a step away uh, from checkout and conversion. And then how does it work for the, uh, for the advertiser? Well, they bid on a CPC basis. And they have a dashboard. They can change the CPC anytime, 24-7. Uh, and they can look at the results. On the publisher side, uh, they have an inventory management uh, view of our system. Uh, and we pay them on a CPM basis. So if you will, we're, we're taking the risk of paying CPM and delivering CPC. Why? Because we have a great engine. Uh, how does this work, right? So we're, we're, our DNA is technology as a company, right? And, uh, and, and there's four big technology stacks that we have in the company. One is what we just talked about, the prediction and recommendations uh, algorithm. Two is a real-time buying engine. So here we have a very similar uh, engine, though of course I don't know exactly what uh, the big G uh, does, but we have something similar in terms of a having a, an auction-based model. So all of our clients, if you will, are bidding for impressions. And the highest impression, the highest value uh, wins. In addition to that, I talked a little bit about this. We have a dynamic creative optimization engine, which effectively for different people will serve different creatives based on their history and based on what they react to. And finally, we couldn't do this without having a reliable, flexible, and scalable uh, high-performance computing engine. So going on the same theme of, you know, what is our DNA? So as a company, uh, we're really a technology company. We, we have over 300 engineers in the company. And in the core group of R&D, we have almost 200 engineers that have been working at this for eight years. So great thing is we're probably the one that spends the most in terms of, of this sector uh, online. But in addition to that, we've also been learning for eight years what works and what doesn't work. And it's been feeding the engine. Um, and then. We have scale. Uh, we have six data centers that are in three different continents, Europe, the US, and Asia. And we have over 6,000 uh, servers. And in terms of what we do on a per second basis, we serve 25,000 ads. And you have to think about what ads mean. You have to create the ad, which means you have to choose between a million products what to serve. You have to figure out what creative you want to serve. You have to quite creative format. You have to build the ad, and then you have to serve the ad. And we do 25,000 of these per second. So you know, very much a technology uh, company. So doing all of this, obviously, you know, one of the great things about our business is we don't really have any conflict with our clients. When our clients get clicks, we get money. When our clients get clicks, they get sales. So it's very aligned. And so driving all of these sales for our clients has driven our financial performance also. So if you look at the growth rates from 2010 to 2012, uh, we've had over 100% compounded annual growth. And this has led, of course, to the, uh, to the IPO that we had on NASDAQ uh, two weeks ago. And we're, our solution transcends borders. That's one of the great things about great technology. It actually works everywhere. So we have 15 offices. We're serving ads, actually, I think, now in 42 markets. Uh, and we have about 750 people. Now, a lot of people have offices in a lot of places, but do they actually have business in a lot of places? So when you look at our uh, geographic revenue distribution, we have a very diversified revenue base. So I, I can't even tell what it is. But Europe, obviously, you know, that's where we started. It's still a bigger part of our business. But you know, the US uh, and Asia are already a very big part of our business. All right, so how, how do we do this? When you think about our, our client base, we have over 4,000 advertisers. And, and you'll, you'll span the gamut in terms of quality of e-commerce advertisers. You have retail, travel, classifieds, telecom. And this is just a small, uh, a small set of those advertisers. Very importantly, too, 
uh, is where we get the impressions. So we do some of the things that everybody does, which is linking into the real-time uh, bidding exchanges. Uh, you know, th the type of integration that you have makes a difference, but we certainly are a big player in all of these exchanges. But in addition to that, we also have developed very unique um, relationships with publishers. So we have over 6,000 uh, publishers that we work with directly to get access to quality inventory and all of this gives us a very large and diversified set of inventory that we can work on to deliver ROI for our customers. In addition to that, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is mobile. Why? Because mobile is a, is a big thing. I'm sure you guys are all looking at this. Uh, and more and more, we're all spending time on this. I'm sure half of you are just looking at your screens while I'm presenting. Uh, and so the time that is being spent on these devices actually is growing the inventory based on mobile quite a bit. And so what's happening is there's a huge amount of inventory. Uh, from, a, from a media perspective. The publishers don't have great ways of monetizing that inventory. And we've been on mobile now on all the platforms, Safari, iOS, uh, uh, Google, et cetera, for a while. And our solution on mobile works, at well, works as well on all the metric as it does on the desktop. So similar click-throughs, similar conversion rates at what you're getting on um, on desktop. So here's, here's an example of what we've done. Japan was one of the countries where we started earliest with mobile. Why? Because if you've been to Asia and you've been to Japan, you'll know that they, uh, they have been in mobile quite a while and there's a lot of transactions that happen uh, through mobile. Uh, this is an example of what we've done in Japan uh, for the last eight months and we started slowly. But what you see is you have an exponential curve in terms of what we deliver uh, in terms of impressions, and then even with all that growth, we have a click-through that's very high, actually higher than what we see on display. So you have a 0.63% click-through on average. And this is a fast curve, and it's accelerating, because uh, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more common to have people spend more time on their tablets. If you talk to retailers from different parts of the world, they all tell you, oh, between 15 to 40% of my sales are already coming through mobile. Majority through tablets, but a big part of it is coming through mobile, and it's only going to increase. So it's a big opportunity for us. We think it's a big opportunity for our clients, because uh, there's a lot of people that are going through this, and there's not much demand for the inventory. So there's a big, big, uh, or at least there's a, for the time being, there's a, there's a window of opportunity where this inventory uh, is not taken and where you can get great ROI uh, from buying in that inventory. So that's it. Thank you very much.